In the previous episode, we visited Hanfer National Monument and hiked the Wet Bluffs North Trail, where we walked on two impressive sand dunes in Pacific Northwest and learned about the Hanfer site's historical importance as the birthplace to full-scale plutonium production, which later led to the detonation of the world's first nuclear bomb and rewrote world history forever on August 9, 1945 in Nagasaki, Japan. Our adventure continues as we dig even deeper by visiting the place that started it all, Hanford Sites B Reactor. Uh, good morning, everybody. So right now I am in the city of Richland. Well, actually in the outskirts of Richland. And uh, right now I am at the gathering point for the tour to the Manhattan Project at the Hanford Reach for that tour. This very office is where you're supposed to meet uh, 50 minutes prior to the tour departure. And right now at this moment, I'm just at a coffee shop right across the street from the visitor center. And uh, yeah, the coffee shop is called Roscoe's Coffee. The uh, coffee here is really good. So if you're early, don't know where to go, this is a very good point because I also saw a couple other folks who are also participating in the tour uh, grabbing coffee here. So I guess for now, uh, let's just wait till the tour start and then I can show you what this tour is all about. This tour is free of charge, but requires prior reservation online. And it tends to be full quite often during the peak summer season. So definitely book way in advance. Even if you're unable to book the tour, the visitor center is still worth your time. You will get to learn about the Hanford site's history and what you would expect to see if you get to visit the actual reactor B, as well as other parts of the site that are not open for public visit. After a quick orientation, you'll be transported to the B reactor by bus. pretty much remained the same way it did when it was shut down in 1968. Once inside, you will be brought to the core of the B reactor, where a retired nuclear engineer will give you a quick introduction and answer all questions you have. Then the tour group will be divided into different small groups to see the control room of this reactor. You are free to walk around in most of the other areas inside the B reactor. I was assigned to the later control room tour, so why don't we check out what the other section of the building has. for this facility here. It was my turn to check out the control room. It felt like time travel all the way back to the peak of the Cold War, as most of the equipment and even the offices seemed to be straight from the 1960s. I think I had only seen something like this in old sci-fi movies. After Enrico Fermi's team created the world's very first nuclear reactor in 1942, also known as Chicago Pile 1 in an underground lab at the University of Chicago. 
The Manhattan Project team needed to find a site for full-scale plutonium production in order to create nuclear bombs. Lieutenant General Leslie Groves, who was the director of the Manhattan Project, chose Hanford because of the region's abundant hydroelectricity to power the production and the proximity to materials that were needed for the construction. To make ways for the creation of Hanford site, residents and local Native American bands were relocated and the Hanford area became restricted area for civilian access since then until the 21st century. During the Cold War, Hanford site continued to produce plutonium used for nuclear bombs and became a center of nuclear research. Despite I'm no expert in nuclear science, or should I say not an expert in any science whatsoever, I found my visit to the B reactor very satisfying. I don't think I had ever seen anything like an old school nuclear reactor before. It was truly an eye-opening experience, especially for me as a Cold War history buff. Speaking of the Cold War, one of the participants from the tour, let's call her Karen, had been paying extra attention to me and my group. Later, I overheard Karen talking to the guide, asking if running such tours would put United States national security under risk. The guide kind of knew where she was coming from, as my group were the only folks who didn't look like were from America. And he told her, national security? You mean how to produce plutonium? This is certainly not a secret anymore after World War II ended. I used to carry a briefcase with documents that could explain how to build this reactor step by step that I could show to people if they're interested. Nowadays, if you Google, it's all up there now. That's why we welcome everyone from all over the world to register this tour and come here. There's nothing secret about the B reactor. Not anymore. Yep, I did have a lot of experiences dealing with some Americans who still believe that they live in the middle of the Cold War. I've also encountered American people who think that they know the national security and national secrets better than the CIA. People who claim that they know what other countries are like better than the State Department or the nationals of those countries. And people who attempt to lecture what, and I quote, real Mexican and Indian food are to folks who are actually from Mexico and India. Uh, sounds familiar? Trust me, nobody knows better than I do. Well, there is nothing I can do to change people like Karen. I just leave them alone so these little geniuses can be happy in their own universe. However, I do applaud the answer our guide at B Reactor gave to Karen. And therefore, I highly recommend this tour to anyone who visits this part of Washington State. Following the conclusion of the B Reactor Tour, we return back to the Visitor Center in Richland. Richland is one of the cities that make up Washington State's Tri-Cities area, the other two cities being Kennewick and Pasco. Before we move on to where we will set up the camp for the evening, why don't we go check out one place I think is worth visiting in Kennewick? 
all right so uh, for the afternoon so yeah apparently the sun is out, really hot and uh, so I am right now at the Reach Museum in Kennewick. The Reach Museum serves as an interpretive visitor center for the Hanford Reach National Monument and the old Hanford site where B Reactor is located. You will get to learn about the ecosystem, the geology, as well as the history of Hanford Reach inside this amazing museum. Definitely a must see for anyone visiting the Tri-Cities area. Later that day, I arrived at the campgrounds where we were spending the night, Chabonneau Park by the Snake River, a tributary of Columbia River that originated near the Yellowstone National Park in Wyoming. The campsite and the park are maintained by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, because right next door is the Ice Harbor Hydro Dam. You can even visit this dam on certain days. But I felt that it's kind of skippable unless you're with school-aged children. Karen must would have gone crazy if she knew that after visiting what she thought was national secret. The United States Army Corps of Engineers also allowed me to camp right next to an important infrastructure. But I don't care about Karen. The real problem for me at the time was purely weather related. So I had to find myself a way to cool off. All right, so right now I am on the Columbia River. Yeah, what a place to uh, cool off. It was really, really hot today, and uh, it is still pretty hot here, I can tell you. I was hoping I could get a breeze or something, but there's nothing. Oh, well, I guess I'm just gonna struggle here a bit, and then, uh, yeah, I'll probably just head back to my camp and, uh, I don't know, drink more water, try my best to cool off. But anyways, the uh, inconvenient truth is that I do not know how to stand up on a stand-up paddleboard. So I'm just using it as a kayak. But, you know, it is what it is, and uh, now I'm battling the water with all the waves generated by motorized boats. Oh well, maybe that's a sign that I really should get back before things get ugly. Then it was around sunset time. I followed the map to a place that was on high ground right next to the Ice Harbor Dam. So behind me here, this is a memorial dedicated to the Native Americans uh, from this area. And uh, well, I can tell this is an amphitheater because as I'm speaking, I can hear my own echoes. Like what we saw at the Itaipu Dam in Brazil, the construction of the Ice Harbor Dam did submerge certain areas underwater, which in this case, a local Native American burial ground. One of the artifacts rescued prior to the completion of the dam was this rock that had petroglyphs carved onto it. Nowadays, it has become a memorial, but kind of lost the meaning as it was not where it was actually supposed to be. To many, this rock is for remembering the Native Americans and the ancestors who have lived in this region for millennia. However, if we approach from a different perspective, oh well, it's probably just a way to glorify how local Native Americans had to sacrifice just to pave the way for United States to build a hydro dam right here.
As I was thinking aloud, the sun began to set, marking another day to the end and the coming of darkness. But for those of us who are optimistic, we know that this also means a new beginning, because at the end of this darkness, lights will once again return and shine even brighter. <laughs>